on board with Joey just ahead of us. Final lap, and look at this. A huge moment opens up for us. Finally, an opportunity to beat Joey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I don't give a fuck. Okay, maybe. Left, left for vehicle. There we are. Collision. Thank you. All right, Joey. Did this incident occur within the city? Maybe. No, not. I guess technically it didn't. What the? This is the car, this is the track, and this is a cat at Christmas. You gonna see Santa? You gonna sit on Santa's lap? We are back at the Nurburgring Nordschleife. There's Joey ahead of us, two peanut butter and jelly cars back to back. Well, they're separated by Kane in between us, who is going to be a character of this race. Lap one and our new launch is kicking into full gear. Joey with a good launch as well. Kane actually with a very good launch. We redline first gear and then Kane drives directly into car number four here, trying to follow Joey's slipstream. I guess unaware that that guy was there. We drive very far around the outside, end up kind of shipping it deep alongside 14 as we go through corner number one, finding the space on the inside of this next corner, which is very tight when you enter from that angle, but everybody squeezes through there and we end up going side by side with Kane. So we have Kane on our right side, which is the inside for this next corner, going to go a bit deep here to give him a lot of space following car number 14's line there. And that actually allows car number seven, Dano, to just slip up uh, alongside us for just a second. He'll end up backing out for the next corner as we get front row seats to watch car number 14 and 11 go side by side two corners here going side by side uh, and it looks like car number 14 going to get a better exit out of there car number 11 slipping in back into the line and uh, we will go single file towards the chicane i definitely had the opportunity to make a move here but i didn't really want to do anything this early in the race braking slightly early thankfully uh, i do that because it looks like the car ahead breaks a little early as well so we avoid contact there and on to the nordschleife we go for the first time out of three three full laps of the nordschleife to go including that the gp part of the circuit that we just went through dano behind kane in front i'm feeling pretty confident in my pace at this point this is my second race of the week and uh, dano behind actually messaged me just before we got into this race, letting me know that he did absolutely zero practice. So love to hear that. Uh, Dano is an extremely fast and competent driver, so I'm not really too worried about that. If anything, it just means that I might actually be able to outpace him for once, which would be cool. And it looks like by the time we come through Foxhole, we've actually put a, a little bit of time between ourselves and Dano, open that gap up to about a second. And up ahead of Kane, it looks like car number 14 is beginning to pull away. No major time gap there, but I mean, you have to be careful because if people open that up too much, then by the time you get onto the uh, dotting or you can definitely completely detach yourself from that group. And looking at the relative, I noticed that, I mean, they were starting to pull away. So the sooner, the better that we can get around Kane. And I didn't want to force anything like crazily. I wasn't going to make a wild dive. The best place to make a move on the Nordschleife is on one of the straights. You know, there's three different straights opportunities for you to get that done. So that's what I was aiming for. But I, as a racing driver, it's like natural for me to want to put pressure on somebody if I think that I am faster than them. And so that's kind of what I was trying to do to Kane. Just stay right behind him, stay in his mirrors. And coming through this uphill right hander, you'll see I get very close. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just putting pressure on him, but he was not happy. You pack it in and get the so that's what he said, but this is what I heard. You pack it in. And I honestly couldn't understand it. I thought he was trying to let me through because he moved over to the outside. And then he kind of cuts back across there and I have to lift. And I'm like, okay, so he's not trying to let me through. I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I was committed to the pass at this point. You are retarded. That caught me a little off guard. I honestly thought he said earlier that he was going to let me through. And then he moved over to the right and it just... I mean, in my head, I was like, oh, he's letting me through. Uh, either way, he does eventually let us through there after he calls us a, a mean name. And Dano is going to follow us through, then slingshot past us. And car number 11 going to give us a little bit of a nudge, which I am perfectly happy with. That gives me a better chance against Dano here. I'm going to back out through Hell's Corner, funnel behind Dano, and take a look at this move. I know he has a bad entry here, probably going to go deep on exit. And we are going to fully ship it through the inside here. This move was... This move honestly felt like a win by itself to me. 215 kph switchback just past Hell's Corner. It barely opened up. I mean, 
very small possibility that that worked out, to be honest. But that's a big part of why I sim race, is to really get into these positions and see how you can navigate them in the craziest way possible. Uh, and that one was just... I, I, it just felt amazing. So we are up into P6 as car number six through the carousel for the first time. And we now have to pull away from Dano, who is holding back Kane. So they're about half of a second behind me at the moment. We are now four seconds away from P5, who for whatever reason it says is P14. I'm not sure my relative has been bugging like crazy. Either way, my uh, main goal here is not exactly P5 at the moment. Uh, my main goal for the rest of this lap is to pull away from Dano and Kane behind. Preferably, I need them by 1.6 seconds, roughly, by the time I get onto the Dottinger to keep them off of my tail and keep me safe onto the GP circuit. So that is my goal. Currently have them at about 7 tenths behind. And uh, Dano is quick, like I said, extremely quick, but fortunately, he had not put any practice in on this car track combo, which should give me a major edge. And I'm doing everything in my power to abuse that advantage. Meanwhile, Joey, who is in P2 as car number five, is about to have quite a moment driving across the grass and actually getting a one second slowdown for that. So he's going to have to slow down at some point this lap, which sucks because there are three cars queued up behind him. And right before he heads towards that second carousel, he's going to pull over to the left, slow down and serve it, end up losing three positions. Hopefully he can stay in the slipstream onto the Dottinger. You can see him just ahead of us as we come through a few seconds later. And uh, Dano and Kane behind us going through the second carousel neither of them getting a very good run through there which was crucial as they were pretty close to me previous to that point and now you can see as we head onto the Dottinger the gap between myself and Dano is growing he's definitely still within slipstream range but that little bit of a speed advantage that I have entering the Dottinger was enough to keep me safe so lap number two comes around we have maintained P6 Joey up ahead of us by about four seconds into turn one I'm not very confident on the GP I promise I've actually gotten a lot better by now but this race was from about five days ago, so beginning of the week, and I just really was not confident. A little bit of oversteer there as I fail to short shift into second, which you definitely should do for that corner. So uh, losing some traction, losing some time. Dano is now right back behind me. If, as long as I can keep him behind me until I get to the Norge life, I have faith that I can if not pull away, at least hold my own against him on the Nordschleife. Uh, that's my goal here. I know he's faster than me around the GP. I'm absolutely positive that he is. Kane behind seems to be falling off a little bit as well, which kind of sucks because it means Dano's not really under any pressure as we head on to the Nordschleife. I was hoping Kane would stay close enough to battle with him and, you know, I could see them kind of slow down as they would fight each other, but that wasn't to be the case. I don't get the greatest run on the first corner of the Nordschleife, but honestly, it's pretty unconsequential. I'm not really going to lose anything more than probably about half of a tenth there. And Dano is absolutely hauling ass. He has adapted super quickly. I'm sure he probably knows this track to some extent. This is really my, I think this is my third week driving it. So I'm still learning the track, the ins and outs, and kind of changing my line almost every single lap at this point, really trying to figure it out. This corner, for example, I wasn't taking that inside curb nearly as much as I could have that right side curb. I end up going into the dirt on exit, losing a bit of time. Here's Dano's view of that. Managed to catch it, thank God, as we head into Flug Platz, going to allow Dano to have a slight speed advantage heading into Flug Platz. Not the worst thing in the world, because sometimes if you're going a little bit slower through Flug Platz, it can allow you to get a slightly better exit, which I think is exactly what happens here. We begin to pull away from Dano ever so slightly, enough that it, we should be safe heading into this next series of corners as we are kind of going down this pretty long straight. He does end up catching us by the time we head through Foxhole and he is going to stay hot on our tail, trying to apply pressure to us. It's a combination, I think, of me breaking slightly early for a few of these corners, which could have been um, caused by him beginning to put pressure. You know, when somebody puts pressure on you, you don't always drive at your best. It's definitely a, a skill to be able to drive at your best when somebody is right on your tail. One that I'm working on, I uh, just hadn't quite gotten it at this point, especially on this track. Four tenths behind us as we head into one of the more technical track or corners on the track. Downhill left-hander, weird camber straight into a chicane. Both Dano and myself getting through there just fine. He is just about in prime time. We have three corners until a very long straight. I'm a bit worried because he's definitely in a position to overtake. However, he's going to lose the rear end one corner before we get to that straight. Kane goes through, Dano stays to the side, loses a position, and that will relieve all pressure from us. So we now have nobody behind, nobody ahead, really, nobody in sight at least. We have about four seconds either direction 
with Joey being that car ahead of us. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Joey is very fast. So it would be cool if we could catch him, but it wasn't necessarily on my plate. You know, I was happy we're in, we're in, uh, we're in P6. That's a decent position. That's where we were expected to finish. Uh, already enough action this race, but uh, it's not going to end because Joey is going to have some snap oversteer heading into the extremely fast downhill right-hander into the wall. That is going to give him some damage. And as we come through that corner, we're going to be a little bit cautious here. We see Joey rejoining the track and I expected that he had some damage. So I expect that we should be able to pass him at some point, but I wasn't going to rush it. We still have five seconds to cane behind. So we're not in any immediate need to get past Joey. We have the entire last lap to go still a lot of time and this probably would have been my moment to pass coming through foxhole and this exit right here on the right should have definitely been my moment as joey got a poor exit however i am going to have some oversteer back off of the throttle and that'll kind of take away that opportunity which will end up i don't want to say being the nail in my coffin but it's kind of like the first step or a step that led to me dying because I should have been ahead of Joey here, but I'm not. Joey is going to lose traction, struggling with his damaged brakes and steering. Uh, bounce across the track and yeah, we just barely, oh God, no. Oh, Joey. Friendly fire on the Nordschleife and we do have a bit of steering damage. Kane is gonna end up going through here and for whatever reason, Kane just had an issue with me. So he was uh, not hesitant to let that out. You kill him, Evan. I really did not understand the issue that Kane had with me uh, at this point, at least I do find out later. Um, but yeah, my steering is absolutely cooked. As you can see here, I'm driving in a straight line, but the steering is not straight. More than my steering though, what I'm worried about is, I, well, I guess it's also my steering, but my steering under braking, because when you have this problem, you tend to, well, the car doesn't brake exactly like one-to-one -one on both sides. It feels very weird. And yeah, I'm just not able to control it coming onto the straight. We're gonna slide into the wall and the descent will continue, losing two more positions, one to Dano and one to Joey, and then also one to Dean Mackey. You two got in a tough way. I can't say I was surprised, you died. They're teammates, like they're friends. And then Joey is gonna die here. Um, still not quite sure what the problem between me and Kane was. Shout out to Dano for being Dano. He's like a living meme, I fucking love that guy. And uh, yeah, so we get pick up that position from Joey, able to survive that one. We're under pressure as I'm just not confident in my car's ability to drive at all. So we've got two guys behind us, not really any chance of us holding them back on the Dottinger. They both go through. And then just to put a massive amount of salt in the wound, for whatever reason, I saw him get a kind of poor run through there. I was like, oh, maybe I could get this position. And I slam on the throttle and into the wall, the final corner. Epic save though, managed to keep that thing facing the right direction, which I was happy about. And then Josh Garner is gonna go through as well. So we are demoted to P11 right before we cross the line. And that will be our race done. So went massively downhill towards the end there. It happens. And I had a conversation with Kane at the end, trying to clear things up. Kind of a weird conversation, but I will just let you listen to it yourself. Well, it was a crash at the start. I got hit on the right. But yeah. Um, and like, it was too unsafe to bloody fight this race. Like, I don't know who it was earlier, the American. Yo, way too aggressive. Yo, Kane, sorry. I thought I totally thought you said something else. I thought you said that, uh, you were about to let me through. Uh, I'll, I'll replay it. Maybe I did say something along the lines of letting you through, but that was only after, like, you, uh, sent it. I don't know. Maybe it's the last race I, uh, was being more passive. But, um, yeah, I'll replay it. No, no, you didn't say it. I, I just, uh, listened back to it. I, I have my volume pretty loud on my, uh, car. And when it happened, when it was like, you were heading onto that straight, I thought you said you were about to let me through when you moved over to the right, and that's why I moved onto the inside. I wasn't trying to send it on you there. Which lap in, uh, in the back straight you say, yeah? So you're talking up the hill, yeah, Aiden? Uh, yeah, yeah, up the, up the hill. I uh, understood, yeah. I'll um, have a look. <laughs> yeah, what it was. Uh, I, I was complaining earlier about you kind of like being aggressive, and you were bumping me a couple times, and then I called you an idiot or a retard. So, I was a little bit upset. Yeah, but I wasn't I wasn't trying to hit you or kill you or anything. Yeah, um, it was just like on the Grand Prix area. You like bumped me, I think, a couple of times. That was what I was referring to. And then, yeah, I was just really sketched out after that. But uh, like, you, you seem really aggressive. But yeah, 
Uh, sorry for calling you a name. I think it was the downhill section as well. I'm just looking back now. Um, but I don't know. You just look like uh, maybe it's me breaking too early. But it always looked like you broke that little bit later, and you were just close every every corner. Yeah, I was trying to apply some pressure, but I wasn't. I wasn't trying to kill you. I uh, understood. You definitely have pace, but um, yeah. I mean, even if you eventually got by me very cleanly. Um, I wouldn't have kept up with you. No, all good. I wasn't meaning to uh, like put you in put you in danger. Yeah, I'm here for the rating one and the safety rating also, so I'm I'm keen to stay alive. So, yeah, you can kind of take that however you want, but I want to quickly look over basically all of our interactions because I don't think I mean I actually know that we never touched. He actually runs directly into car number four on the start of the race and then we go around the outside so we're pretty far from him we have a car between us at this point and once we do go side by side a lot of space honestly more space than i should be allowing him i should be holding him a lot tighter through this next corner but instead i opt to go pretty deep here and he gets a really good i mean really good advantage over me and actually gains a position because of that the next time we see each other is heading into the chicane where we break extremely early earlier than early is for me before the 100 not making contact and it kind of sounded like he just didn't really want to race like he just wanted to drive on the track with nobody else around him because I, I don't think putting pressure on somebody is being over aggressive like I think that that's okay to do I think that's part of racing. Uh, it sounded like he just wanted to drive on track by himself. Once again, there you saw we didn't make any contact. And actually the only time we did make contact is when he gave me a bump draft, which obviously I'm happy with. Uh, I don't care about that contact. I, I, didn't, I didn't see any problem. But to be fair to Kane, this is how his last race ended. Car number 22, shipping it from downtown, uh, sending him into the wall. And that was on the first lap. So it makes it understandable, I suppose. Really, man. I think he probably mistaked me for that guy at the beginning. Anyway, here are the results. We did cross the line in P11 between Patty and Josh Garner. Go check out Josh Garner on YouTube. He's a content creator as well. Super consistent. Here are our gains slash losses. Somehow we gained 0.3 safety rating. Honestly, I rating could have been way, way worse. So I'm happy with it only being that much lost. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me, please check out my channel and some of my other videos. And I'm sure you will enjoy those as well.